Let me tell you about why I got into the retro handheld gaming niche. You see, prior to this year, I wasn't really playing any of the games that I grew up with, which is odd to think about now because it's literally like all I do. Now, don't get me wrong, I was playing video games, but I was mainly just playing modern games. And in fact, I still do play modern games. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them. I still play Apex. I still play a bunch of Switch games. But the thing is, though, these modern games, that there's just something that they're missing that doesn't give me the same sense of adventure and excitement that I used to get from the games growing up. I wanted to relive the days of playing the video games that I grew up with and also playing the games that came out around the time that I was growing up, but I didn't get a chance to play. Now, if you're like me, you probably lost a lot of your physical collection. In my case, I lost almost all of it. I could emulate these games on a computer, but it just doesn't feel right. That's where the retro handheld comes in. Finally, a way to play the classics in a form factor that makes sense. Which brings me to today's video, the review of the Mayu Mini Plus. In my first impressions and unboxing video of the Mayu Mini Plus, I told you that I think I found my dream retro handheld. Mainly because of the strong nostalgic vibes it provides compared to the other retro handles I owned at that point. And after playing this device for about 100 hours at this point, I can confidently say that this is still the case. On top of it being a beautiful device for a great price point, by the way, it has a really strong community backing it. This is very evident in the, the operating system it uses, Onion OS. Now, I have a lot to say about the Mayu Mini Plus. I'm really excited to get into this in-depth review. So without further ado, let's get into the review of my 100 hours playing the Mayu Mini Plus and what I think about it. On screen, you'll see the specs for the Mayu Mini Plus. One big upgrade from the original Mayu Mini is the Wi-Fi. If you like to play with retro achievements turned on like I do, you'll be happy about that. Plus, having the internal Wi-Fi makes updating the console much easier, which I'll get more into later on in this video. The 3.5-inch IPS display looks great on this device. I especially like how they maximize the screen size real estate. The screen extends from edge to edge, providing you a very nice screen size for a console that is still relatively small. The A, B, X, Y buttons have a glossy finish, which is not honestly my favorite, but it still looks very nice. I honestly prefer a more matte or rubbery kind of feel to face buttons, but that's completely a personal preference. I realize that most consoles and most controllers have a glossy finish. So that is more of the norm. I have a little bit of a hot take on the D-pad. I'm honestly not a fan of it. I think it protrudes a little bit too far out of the system, and I find that changing directions on this D-pad is not very fluid. When I talk about the gameplay, I'll show you exactly what I mean. Also on the front, you'll see a button in the center. This is the game switcher button, as well as the hotkey for the emulation controls. I love the game switcher option, which I'll talk more about later in this video. On the back, we have our stacked shoulder buttons. I talk about this in the gameplay section of the video again, and I'll admit the R1 and L1 shoulder buttons are not that comfortable to use. It kind of reminds me of playing on the Game Boy Advance SP where you kind of have to claw your fingers to play it. On the top, we have the power button, and on the side, we have our up and down volume buttons. I much prefer having buttons for volume instead of a slider. On the bottom, we have our headphone jack, a USB-C adapter for charging, and a micro SD slot that you'll use to install Onion OS and your ROMs. I'm a stickler for quality of builds for when it comes to my retro handhelds. Now, I'm no expert on different kinds of plastics and what was the really the best quality, but based on my own experience and overall feel of this console, to me it feels like a very durable plastic. For instance, when I handle my Retro Pocket 3 Plus, I'm nervous that if I drop it, I'm going to end up breaking it. With the Mayu Mini Plus, I don't have that concern at all, especially when I put the screen protector on it. I can be pretty rough with this console without worrying about damaging it. I also like the texture of this particular plastic. It's more grippy, which makes the device even less likely to be damaged from me dropping it. As for the color, obviously I went with the transparent purple, which I think looks amazing. I want to address the size real quick. When I was purchasing the Mayu Mini Plus, I was also looking at the original Mayu Mini, despite it being not available anywhere. Something that people really liked about the Mayu Mini original is the charming small size. The size itself adds to an appeal. It's almost like a novelty kind of thing. I was nervous that the Mayu Mini Plus would be 
kind of too big, putting it out of that Mayu Mini charming appeal category. But honestly, I think the size is perfect. In fact, I don't think I would enjoy it that much if it was smaller. This device is still very pocketable and portable. The screen size, in my opinion, is perfect. Any smaller and I would be straining my eyes a bit just to look at those tiny sprites. I installed Onion OS on my Mayu Mini Plus. Onion OS is the gold standard when it comes to operating systems for this device. When your Mayu Mini Plus first arrives, you'll see a theme that looks like Onion OS, but really it's just a theme that they put over the stock operating system. What you want to do is install Onion OS, and it's pretty simple. Just follow a guide online. I recommend, like always, Retro Game Core's guide. FYI, Mac users. When installing Onion OS, you'll need a micro SD card that is formatted to FAT32, not EXFAT. Mac, being the kind of computer that likes to hold your hand, will not format SD cards larger than 32 gigabytes to FAT32 because EXFAT is more advanced for the speed of like writing and reading files and whatnot. And honestly, not many devices require a FAT32 format. Mayu Mini, however, does require it. A PC will let you format the SD card however you want. Mac will only let you format to FAT32 for 32 gigabyte cards or smaller. However, if you purchase a larger card like I did, there is a workaround. I scoured the internet for a solution. Since I don't own a PC at the moment, I know, I know, I need to get one, but honestly, the build is kind of expensive, okay? I found this Reddit post, which had the answer I was looking for. All you need to do is download Raspberry Pi imaging software, and you can format those larger micro SD cards no problem. The setup process was pretty straightforward, as I said. I put on some of my favorite games, and it was time to start gaming. Before I tell you about the games I played and tested out on the Mayu Mini Plus, I did want to share a few things about Onion OS. First of all, Onion OS has my favorite UI as of today. One thing that I find awesome is the fact that you can change the theme to all these different options. I love how retro this theme in particular feels, but as you can see, there's a bunch more. Look, even TechTweeb made one. Second, I'm a huge fan of the simplicity of the UI. One of the main complaints I had about the Retro Pocket 3 Plus was how it kind of reminded me of playing on a cell phone with a gamepad. There are a lot of settings and different emulators you need to figure out how to download and use in order to get most out of the system. The Mayu Mini Plus, with Onion OS installed, has everything set up for you right off the bat. And again, simplicity. Look at the main menu when you boot it up. It only has four options. I can't stress enough how great this OS is. I should also mention that recently Onion OS rolled out an update. Updating Onion OS is simply done through the device itself. Through this update, they added a couple things, like the ability to scrape box art for your games, and DS gameplay through Drastic, as well as Pico 8. Just another example of how Onion OS truly is amazing. One issue that I had with Onion OS had to do with the Wi-Fi. Now, this could be a hardware issue, but I'm pretty confident it's a software issue. Basically, sometimes when I turn on the device, it wouldn't register that I had the Wi-Fi on. It would sometimes take like 30 seconds all the way up to five minutes. Sometimes I would even turn it on and it wouldn't register the Wi-Fi at all until I reset the system. I scoured the internet for an answer and I finally came across a Reddit post which said something along the lines of you can't have special characters in your password, this screws something up. Well, I did have special characters in my password so I changed the Wi-Fi password and actually haven't had that issue since then. Something I just wanted to point out. Talked about the specs, we've talked about Onion OS, now to the good part, the gameplay. Again, I put in like 100 or so hours of gameplay into this device, which means that I've beaten several games, I played a bunch more, and throughout all these game sessions, I learned a lot about the little quirks of the system as well as how in general it controls. So, let's get into the gameplay. The first game I played and beat on the Mayu Mini Plus was The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons, a classic Zelda Game Boy Color game that I really cherish to this day. No surprise here, it played perfectly fine without any issues. Following The Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons, I played its counterpart, Oracle of Ages, another game I cherished greatly and possibly enjoyed even more than Oracle of Seasons. What's interesting about these games, which totally slipped my mind back in the day, is that they follow very different playstyles. Oracle of Seasons is more combat heavy, and Oracle of Ages is more puzzle heavy. Combat and puzzles are a large part of the Zelda series, so it makes sense that these games, which are supposed to be different pieces of an overall puzzle, focus on separate aspects of these Zelda series staples. 
One thing I should point out, about halfway through these games, the A button on my Mayu Mini just started sticking ever so slightly. This has not affected gameplay at all, at least yet, but it's been a little bit annoying. I generally keep my hands clean when I play on this device, so I don't think it's anything to do with oil or grime getting trapped in there. I just pressed the button too many times and now it sticks ever so slightly. It's almost impossible to show on camera because again, it's a very slight change and it's hardly noticeable, but something I should still point out. Another thing I'll mention is the D-pad. I'll be honest, it's not the best D-pad I've used. When inputting quick directional changes, the D-pad controls are not as precise when compared to my other go-to handle at the moment, the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. This is evident when I need to quickly change directions and I have to sort of roll my finger from like an up direction to a right direction. I'll need to be more purposeful with my thumb movements to get a true right direction instead of a diagonal up and right direction. I think this has to do with how far the D-pad protrudes from the device. Next, I decided to take on another one of my childhood treasures, Golden Sun 2. Holy cow, I forgot how long this game was. I'll be honest, I didn't finish the game, but I got pretty far, about 31 hours in. If you haven't played any of the Golden Sun series before, aside from a great story, this game has a really fun battle mechanic with their unique dungeon system making for addicting gameplay. Not much to say here about performance on the Mayu Mini Plus, except for the fact that GBA looks really nice on this console. Next, I tried out Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, a game which I've never played before. While playing Castlevania Aria of Sorrow, I started to realize that I wasn't a huge fan of the placement of the R1 and L1 shoulder buttons. The shoulder buttons are pretty important for this game, and I felt like my fingers were straining when I had to press them quickly for combat. This reminds me of what it's like to have to claw your fingers in order to hit the shoulder buttons on the Game Boy Advance SP. Now, I realize this is partly due to just the form factor of a vertical handheld. There's not really much you can do here. In between games, I played some Kirby Superstar for the SNES. As you can imagine, SNES played perfectly fine. Finally, it wouldn't be an 8-bit bongo review if I didn't play some good old Pokemon. This time I decided to play through Pokemon Sapphire. I even tried to do the self-challenge Nuzlocke. This was the first time I ever tried a Nuzlocke, and I gotta say, it really added a level of challenge that made the game really fun. I tested out a couple other consoles, here's the footage. Definitely some graphical issues playing on the Mayo Mini. I wasn't having this issue while playing on the computer, but that I'm supposed to be holding a present over my head right now. There's a couple other features I'd also like to talk about the Mayo Mini Plus. 
First off, the game switcher. This is actually a really handy tool. All you do is press the middle button and a safe state will be created for the game. Then you enter into this game switcher menu so that you can quickly switch to another game. Next, the sleep mode function. I'm actually a huge fan of how the Mayu Mini Plus with Onion OS uses the sleep function. It creates a save state before entering sleep mode. This is great because with other retro handles I own, sometimes I would put the device into sleep mode and then when re-entering the game, it would crash on rare occasions, causing me to lose data. Not only does the Mayo Mini create that save backup, but also I've never experienced a crash from their sleep mode function. With the sleep function the way it is combined with the game switcher, you end up with a device that is really simple to turn off and on switching games as needed. This makes the Mayo Mini Plus a very plug and play kind of system, which I know a lot of people care about. You will need to install Onion OS up front, but once that's set up, you're good to go. I appreciate you getting this far into the video. I hope that the hundred of hours that I put gaming into the Mayo Mini Plus really resonates in this review. Who is this console for? Well, here's the thing. If you want a powerhouse system that can play stuff like GameCube and PS2 and more than that, you're not going to get that from the Mayo Mini Plus. You're going to need something a little more powerful like, for example, the Retro Pocket 3 Plus. But if you're looking to just play the true retro stuff like NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, SNES, Sega Genesis, this is a really great device for you. It does all of that plus some more, and honestly, it's pretty cheap. Now, there are a couple of small things that you're going to have to deal with, like having to claw your fingers to press the shoulder buttons. But honestly, every retro handheld has their small little problems. It's really not that big of a deal. This device is really my go-to companion for retro handhelds. I just toss it in my pocket. It's very durable. and I don't really have to worry about it you know, breaking or whatever. And I take it everywhere with me. If I'm in a waiting room, if I'm sitting on a bus, in the car, whatever it is, I'm playing on this device because it's so simple to just pick up and start playing. And it just looks great and it feels great in the hands. Also, what really makes a shine is Onion OS. This is by far, as of right now, the best operating system that I've played on a retro handheld. It's got so much like clever thought put into it. It's a very simple system, and every time I boot it up, I just get such a great feeling playing this device. Now, with that being said, if you're looking for a retro handheld that can play non-3D retro games perfectly fine and for an affordable price and have a strong backing from a community as well as an amazing Onion OS, then this is really the device for you. I highly recommend it. I think you'll enjoy playing it. With that being said, I really appreciate you watching this video. Without further ado, that's it for it. Catch you on the flippity flop.